Hello, and thanks for tuning in to I Wonder Who, our series of occasional interviews with the directors behind or the subjects of our documentaries on I Wonder. Today, we're talking about The Kleptocrats, the film that delves into the Malaysian 1MDB scandal that implicated financier Joe Lowe and the then Prime Minister of Malaysia, Najib Razak, and his wife, Rosma, in the disappearance of uh, more than 4.5 billion US dollars from the um, taxpayer-funded 1MDB investment fund. That film in Malaysia tonight and for the rest of this weekend will be available to view for free, as, as will all of our titles on I Wonder, without uh, needing credit card details to sign up. So please do come and check it out and watch the film if you haven't seen it already. But most exciting, we're very honored to be joined tonight by um, the, the star somewhat of the film or the certainly the beating heart of the film um, and someone who has been very close to this 1MDB scandal, the Malaysian Member of, of Parliament for Damansara, Tony Pua. With 1MDB money, he bought a diamond, 22 carat, 27 million US dollars for the wife of the Prime Minister. Nope, it's 120 million ringgit for the diamond. And uh, average teacher gets paid 3,000 ringgit a month. And that's uh, 12 months a year. That's 3,333 teachers you can finance with that one diamond for an entire year. That's a lot of teachers. Tony, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, we, I, I suppose I, I also didn't talk to the sort of timing of this, which is, um, you know, we, we are anticipating a verdict on the Najib, the, one of the, the trials of Najib um, early next week. And uh, I guess I want to get to that a little bit later on. But first of all, I just want to say, um, what have you been up to in, in lockdown and, and what does day to day life for a socially distancing politician look like in Malaysia? Well, uh, the lockdown in Malaysia uh, happened to come at a time just pretty much immediately after a, 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 a political coup d'etat uh, where we actually lost uh, the government, uh, where a faction within, within our government decided to collaborate with uh, Najib's party and formed a new government. So I got kicked out of office and uh, with the lockdown, I became quite free. So uh, it was, a, uh, from a personal perspective, a good break. Uh, give uh, a lot of us uh, time to recharge and uh, while doing so perhaps get in touch back with the community at my uh, constituency so that uh, so that uh, we could provide any assistance they needed during the lockdown period. We know it's been a, a lot of change over, I mean, um, uh, the large Malay, a very strong Malaysian audience tonight and for I wonder, but um, we are in many different countries. So I appreciate you walking us through that. But it's, I think, any country you, that you're in and uh, where you read the news, you've seen that it's been a pretty um, tumultuous time in Malaysian politics over the last five, six years. Um, for the benefit of that audience outside of Malaysia, what we try to talk about in some of these um, uh, interviews is, is the story since. So the documentary ended with the 2018 um, ouster of Najib's party uh, and Najib. What, what just in, a, in, in your words, what's happened with the 1MDB story um, since that time? Actually, uh, well, as you, you could, um, you would find out from watching the, the kleptocrat. Uh, I was extremely involved in the in the in the political process, in the sort of um, whistleblowing process, uh, as part of the loudspeaker to 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 ensure that everyone in Malaysia knows about the scandal, knows about how much uh, the leadership under Najib has stolen from Malaysians. Um, and uh, we succeeded by getting rid of Najib as the Prime Minister during the 2018 elections. And I became part of the government. I was the political secretary to the Minister of Finance. I was uh, working very hard at the ministry uh, and pretty much left the entire scandal in the good hands of the police force, the Anti-Corruption Commission, as well as the Attorney General. 
So there was pretty much this period about 18 months to two years where my involvement was minimal. I get called now and then to provide some advice, but uh, pretty much it was in their good hands. Najib has been charged in court for several of the um, um, offenses. Uh, and as mentioned uh, earlier, uh, Najib, one, one of the charges related to 1MDB, not directly 1MDB, uh, on a smaller scale, only about 40 million ringgit, that's $10 million. Uh, he's, he, he was charged for uh, laundering that fund from one of the former subsidiaries of 1MDB and the verdicts meant to come up in the coming week. So the trial and the legal process has taken a bit of time. Uh, to be honest, the Malaysian people are a little bit frustrated. They wanted to see him in jail immediately after elections, but <laughs> in, in any systems with proper justice uh, in place, there has to be a proper legal process. Uh, all of these scandals and charges are complicated because it involves money laundering, not just within Malaysia, but all around the world. And you need to make sure that all the chain of evidence are connected so that uh, we have a foolproof uh, 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 charge sheet or, or case against Najib in court. So it has taken a while. The first case, the smaller case that involves largely within Malaysia uh, is ready for judgment next week at High Court. Uh, if we succeed in uh, finding him guilty, then uh, he will have the chance to appeal to the Appeals Court and subsequent to that to the Federal Court or the Supreme Court. So the whole process is a bit lengthy. The people are frustrated. Uh, and the other main 1MDB case, the, the, the main 1MDB case uh, about the scandal, uh, in, in that particular case, I believe that the, the trial is not yet complete. Uh, evidence are still being provided. Uh, the court is still hearing the case. Uh, and uh, that is actually a far more complicated case than the first case that uh, that, that he's, he has been charged with. Uh, beyond that, uh, what has happened is that several parties related to the case have also been charged. There has been a charge against Joe Lowe. He's missing and uh, he's being indicted. And if he doesn't turn up in court, then we will seize all his property in Malaysia, uh, along with his fathers uh, and several other parties as well. Uh, there were also several other charges against people who are related uh, to Najib, including Rosma, uh, as well as his uh, stepson, Riza Aziz. Uh, I think his picture came up a bit yeah. earlier. Uh, Riza Aziz uh, over money laundering uh, via his uh, movie producing uh, uh, vehicle, Red Granite. Uh, the interesting development perhaps with uh, Riza Aziz was that after we lost government, the new Attorney General that was appointed uh, decided that he, they would, they would uh, give uh, Riza Aziz an acquittal, uh, not amounting to, uh, sorry, a discharge, not amounting to an acquittal, uh, on the basis that Riza Aziz will return some of this money to Malaysia, which we found ridiculous because we were getting the money back from the US government. Anyway, it is, yeah. Anyway. So yeah. why, why, why do we need him to give it back to us? So, so that, that, that is one uh, development that was uh, uh, of great concern to many of us who, who do want Najib in jail. Uh, but we will see what happens in the, the, the Najib case uh, in the coming days, mainly because the entire trial was uh, conducted pretty much during our reign and hopefully nothing changes from that. Yeah. In in the film The Kleptocrats, uh, and going back well before the film, I mean, I think I saw that the first time you started asking hard questions about what was happening with 1MDB was was, was 2010. Um, you have been a voice of, um, let's call it a thorn in the side of the people who'd, who'd like to keep it quieter um, for quite a long time. Um, what led you to the film? Did the filmmakers reach out to you? Did you know that they were they were making this film and go to them? How, how did that come about? Uh, the filming was actually a fairly complicated process. I think if you have read some of the interviews behind the producers, uh, the filming process started, um, uh, I, I think the producers of the film never expected the process to have taken that long. Uh, they started filming, if I'm not wrong, around 2013, that, they're about 2012, 2013. 
every two, three months, they will come to Malaysia and say, look, we want to film something, some development. Can we follow you around? Can we join some meetings? Uh, can we can we get some shots? And, and, and we will help where we can. Uh, you, you can come join us in this meeting or uh, the, 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 the coalition being formed is, is, is having a meeting then. Perhaps you can catch some of the scenes or some of the leaders a bit later. So they will come into the country uh, every two months or three months and catch some of the le- uh, latest developments. Uh, but over time, there were, they were, I think they had some production issues, funds, uh, 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 I don't know whether they were disputes. And then they brought in new people to help them. And the interview process was, um, I wasn't even sure if the, the film would ever uh, be, be, be completed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but we, we, we did what we can. We were happy to, to, to bring that story out to the public, uh, whether via the, the kleptocrat, the, the film that you, you, uh, you, are, you are showing, or via other channel so so obviously the plateau crap wasn't the only film or documentary that i appeared in uh, but we we were happy to assist anyone who wanted to bring this message out public and we, we were very happy that finally it got completed uh and I, I we also understood one of the problems the producers had uh, uh on the film uh why it took so long because how do you conclude a film that is still in process najib's not in jail we have yeah. not won the elections. Uh, we might lose the elections. You know, that those those real life, real time events uh, does affect uh, production schedule, uh, the storyline. How do you wrap the story around something that is moving all the time? I I, I understand all the challenges the producers faced, and I, I thought the producers did a fantastic job at the end of the day. I think so too, and they were you know, both unlucky and lucky that the election, the surprise result of the 2018 election happened just before they finished the film. So they managed to get it in there, but I'm sure they would have loved to have done more on that. Um, um, Najib's brother, Nazir Rezak, uh, appears throughout the film and at one point talks to the fact that he feared for his safety. You have been um, vocal and the kind of face of the questioning of this thing. Um, I have to ask, did you ever at any point through this process question whether you you were secure and safe? Uh, question, yeah, definitely. Uh, there are times when the, uh, when the heat seems a bit uh, too much for the other side, uh, I would be concerned if, if, if actions would be taken. Uh, I'll be lying if uh, I didn't think about it. Uh, there would be times when I will always be on a lookout if I'm being followed. Uh, but uh, it, it is something that needs to be done. It was something that was necessary. And unfortunately for me, uh, there, were, there weren't many people who knew the case pretty much inside out to be able to give the necessary commands, the necessary arguments, the necessary rebuttals, uh, so that those, those who have committed these crimes can get away with uh, flimsy excuses and so on. So, so I had, unfortunately, that, that responsibility and, and, and for whatever that, that comes, uh, I have come to accept and I think my family has as well. Whatever comes, comes, I need to do what I need to do. Just don't think about it. Put it in a tiny compartment at the back of the head and do what is necessary, do what is right. Uh, as long as you walk the tight road and don't go off it, off it in the sense that don't throw wild, unsupported allegations. Uh, mm-hmm. That allows gives them the chance to take you down. As long as everything you say, while aggressive, are backed by facts uh, and figures, then I think uh, the chances of being thrown in will be reduced. But the risk is always there. Yeah. You talk to the. Um the result for um, Riza Aziz uh, recently, and perhaps you know that that was going one way and then changed with the new government. Perhaps it didn't. But do you think uh, it could be said on one hand that's a an indicator of what might happen with Najib? On the other hand, Najib has a, a long relationship with the current prime minister that maybe you want to talk to a, a little bit. Um, 
when well, the, 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 the irony the, the irony of the entire political situation in Malaysia is that the current prime minister joined the rebellion together with the opposition parties uh, that's my party uh, Dato Sri Anwar's party my party is DAP Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim's party is PKR as well as another party Amana so Muidin together with Mahate joined hands together with the then opposition alliance to bring down Najib regime. And the, why, the reason why Muhyiddin did that was because he started criticizing his president then in AMNO, uh, Najib, uh, on the 1MDB scandal. And uh, Najib got rid of him. He sacked Muhyiddin as the, uh, as the deputy prime minister. He sacked uh, Muhyiddin as the deputy president of AMNO, and Muhyiddin came out to join us to form the new government. So the irony of it is Muhyiddin created a breakaway faction from the current the, 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 the winning government and then allied themselves back with AMNO again to form the new current government. So 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 now Muhyiddin has a razor thin majority of two percent in the parliament and he is completely dependent on the support of Najib as an MP from AMNO to stay in power. So the, 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 the concern and fear we have is what if Najib and several other MPs who are being charged for corrupt practices uh, are found guilty and are disqualified from becoming MPs in the house? then Muhyiddin naturally loses his majority and the government collapses. So that, there is a concern over the interest element uh, in, in, in the current government. How would Muhyiddin react? He was fighting Najib, but now he's dependent on Najib to stay in government. It's almost Shakespearean. Uh, <laughs> it's so complex and, and multi-relationship. Um, I I, I should say you uh, the question to some 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 show in the US presidency and the Senate and Congress, you you might create some new new yeah. new hero dramas. <laughs> well, um I should say we are accepting questions on on Facebook through the live feed, uh, through the, the, the chat area of the live feed. And um I'm gonna sprinkle a few in as we go. Um and you also have you have a separate um suit against Najib that is pending. Um, the, one of the questions that come in said how, um, oh, sorry, this is about the, this, the, the initial suit that is, is hopefully we're going to see a verdict this week, which way, gathering together everything we've said, which way do you think that's going to go? I don't know. Um, my heart tells me that uh, based on how the suit has progressed, Najib would be found guilty because it was simple, straightforward, clear cut. The defenses that he has put up was flimsy. Uh, essentially, if you read the newspaper reports, uh, he says that he doesn't know how the money ended up in his account. He used them and uh, he didn't know that the money was a result of a scam that originated from 1MDB subsidiary. It, it's hardly believable. Uh, and so, so, so we are hopeful, fingers crossed, that he will still be found guilty. Uh, but the process wouldn't end even if he is found guilty because he will definitely appeal the decision. He will go to the court of appeals, uh, and 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 we'll have to see what what happens uh, from from there. And of course, it's not all about Najib. Um, I, I have to ask, do you have any information that the rest of us don't have about the whereabouts of Joe Lowe? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I know for certain. Uh, but for those who follow, who still follow the developments of 1MDB, uh, there has been a recent discovery of a new angle to the scandal uh, post uh, the Department of Justice exposure on 1MDB. There is the nexus between China, Kuwait, and uh, Malaysia. So, so funds were being channeled from China to Kuwait to
to Malaysia and there was a high level relationship between the, uh, uh, that was created uh, among top leaders in China and in Kuwait uh, with Jolo being the middleman. So, 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 so if you ask me where I suspect he is, he is hiding and uh, perhaps protected by certain parties in China, uh, but we have no evidence of that. When we did approach China earlier, the response we got from China is they are not aware of his whereabouts. And if ever we have uh, concrete uh, 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 information on where he was, they will be happy to assist us to, to, to bring him back to Malaysia. But as at this point in time, he is nowhere to be found. Right. I'm sure a lot of Malaysians are asking the, the same question. Um, um, and then another question has just come in, uh, which is very interesting. Who, who's the first person you contacted regarding this scandal and uh, that helped you sped up the investigation? I suppose you had to go to someone you trusted in, in, in putting the pieces together. Mm, no. No. Um, my role... Um, in, in, in this particular case really is to decipher, decipher the, um, sorry, my sign is in the background. That's okay. I think we found your low. <laughs> um, okay. My role in the, 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 the scandal uh, was essentially to decipher the, the, the complicated mass of evidence uh, that, uh, that, that, that are being thrown forward at that point in time. So, 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 so uh, I wasn't quite playing the role of a whistleblower. I was playing the role of someone who, 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 who connects all the dots on the many dots that, that were made available. And right. these many dots were coming from various places. I think Claire Rucastle of the Sarat Report played a huge role in uh, providing a, a load of evidence. Uh, I had information that I was able to gather from parliamentary questions, some answers that they had to provide. Uh, we had, uh, what do you call it, information provided in media reports, uh, signings, dates, uh, and, and, and my role was essentially to, to draw the, the map, how it all works, simplify it uh, for the masses so that the masses can understand uh, what actually took place in, in simple layman terms. Yeah, because you had a background in business and uh, I think you, one of your degrees is in finance, is that right? Oh, or, uh, yeah. Um, and, so the, and you continued that role after Najib was out of power and as an advisor to the yeah. Minister of Finance, yeah. yeah. Um, and so what do you think we've, and, and by we, I suppose, largely I mean you and the Malaysian people, what, what have learned um, out of this and, and how do you think it's, it, it, and has it changed things fundamentally, systemically? What we, what we hope that the entire 1MDB experience uh, or revelation, um, regardless of who becomes government today or tomorrow, no one in government would ever attempt anything so outrageous uh, ever again. Uh, yeah. Still, billions from the, the the treasury to from the people's coffers uh, uh, to 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 basically from entirely for personal uh, benefits. I, I, it, it just outrageous. Uh, it was blat blatant and brazen, uh, and uh, hopefully it becomes lessons that uh, to all future leaders know that if you if you if you do that, you will be caught and you will be shamed. And another question that's that's come in, um, which I suppose is related, you know, despite all that's been revealed, all the work that you've done to sort of unpick the web or whatever the metaphor is, but connect the dots um, and the, the stories that have been written, um, there's still a lot of Malaysians who believe strongly that Najib is innocent. 
or was a victim. Um, how, he's very still very popular in the electorate. How do you how do you respond to people who say that? In 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 Malaysia, um, and and that's why it was very it was a, a very difficult election in twenty eighteen. Uh, despite the the outrageous scandal that we had, uh, it was a very difficult election. We won it, uh, but not by anywhere near a landslide. Uh, the the crux of the matter is uh, we do have an electorate, uh, or thirty percent of it, that gives uh, uh, hardcore support to the then ruling party AMNO, uh, which is Najib's party. <laughs> And that support doesn't move, doesn't cannot be shaken uh, for many reasons. Some of it has got to do with uh, race because AMNO is the Malay party and Malays deem AMNO as the only party which can protect their special rights in the country, uh, regardless of what the leaders do. So the leaders might be perhaps found corrupt, but the party is the only party that can save them uh, or protect them in Malaysia. So that, that, that mindset is present in approximately 30% of the population. So that gives them a very strong base uh, and loyal following, uh, regardless of what the leaders does. And, and within that base, there are those who are really uh, hardcore, uh, even today, supporting Najib Razak, perhaps because of their misguided beliefs, or perhaps because they have benefited uh, from Najib's largess. Yeah, and 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 you know the the most um, shocking and sad thing about it is the long term impact that this this scandal is going to have on Malaysia. What I, I've lost track personally of of what's been repossessed by the U.S. Treasury, what uh, Riz Aziz has agreed to hand back, what. Najib's tax ruling recently will, but how much is coming back of what disappeared, and and what do you think is the long term or mid term uh, financial or uh, economic outlook for Malaysia as a result? Uh, well, the simple the the simple way to look at it, the total loss to the country is the outstanding debt that needs to be paid by the Malaysian government today. And that works out to approximately nine, ten billion US dollars, thereabouts. Uh, that's basically got to be paid by the Malaysian government. Some of which have already been paid by the Malaysian uh, government. Um, the 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 how much of it will come back? It all uh, is an ongoing process. Uh, we are looking at perhaps. From the DOJ actions, uh, we are looking at perhaps optimistically a billion US dollars. I don't know. Right. Uh, then there are other sources where we hope to bring back some funds. There are mon there's some money stuck in Switzerland, perhaps around my understanding was in the region of 400 million US dollars. Uh, there were there were much smaller amounts in Singapore that would have already been brought back already. Uh, there there are ongoing suits uh, in attempts to seize funds in Petro Saudi, one of the earliest collaborators uh, with Jolo uh, in one MDB, three hundred and fifty million US dollars. We are trying to squeeze money from Goldman Sachs uh, because they were crucial. In enabling one uh, MDB to borrow up to six and a half billion US dollars, of which we have to bear and pay almost entirely today, uh, and uh, perhaps several other financial institutions which were involved will have to pay their contribution uh, damages to 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 what has been happening, and uh, and uh, if you add all those things up, I don't know. It could be a number, anything between three billion US dollars to six billion US dollars. Yeah. So, but it will take time. It will yeah. take time, and we will not get it back anytime soon. Uh, the Goldman Sachs bonds, the six and a half billion US dollars, will be due for repayment in twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three. 
uh, not the perfect time to have a coronavirus epidemic happening on top of all of this either. Oh, yeah. Um, another question that I think I know your answer to this, but I think it's a really interesting question because it does, I think, speak to, I, I did live in Malaysia for a while, and it speaks to the, the mindset of, of whether people, how people feel about this. So I'll ask the question, which, which is also from a viewer. If this scandal wasn't discovered, do you think Malaysia would be in a better place? <laughs> uh, the, 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 uh, the simple answer to that is do you believe that ignorance is bliss yeah um, I think some people will feel that they would be better off uh, and they might be uh, because uh, they are not going to see the long term consequences of letting the jeep continuing to Village the country, so 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 I disagree. Obviously, uh, in the short term, some people prefer for stability, and that's one of the reasons why they vote for the previous government because they like the stability. They think that uh, a bit of corruption is fine as long as we have stability, so that we can make our living and uh, leave the politicians to their own devices. Uh, my view is that that stability is false, is like the emperor's new clothes, and it will collapse one day uh, once everything uh, that, 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 that gets accreted over time uh, blows up and the country will get into big problems after that. It's a bit, I mean, the metaphor to use would be a, a frog swimming in the pot of boiling water. You know? Yeah. Doesn't yeah. realize they are quite happy swimming in it uh, until it yeah. reaches falling point, and you realize, "Oops, I'm cooked." I I have to. We will uh, we will ultimately put this up on. I wonder for for people to watch on demand at any time. But I have to say, now in the live moment, we've just heard that there's breaking news. Goldman Sachs has reached a deal with Malaysia to drop criminal charges against the bank in exchange for three point nine billion. So oh, I hope that's a good result for Malaysia. Um, yeah. Um, is that in dollars or ringgit? Uh, good question. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll, I'll, I'll get that number for you. I, it's it's just come across my feed right now. So, um, Tony, and I'm conscious of how how much of your time we're we're taking up on a Friday night. So, I I just love to ask what's next for you personally, and what's the outlook? You're you're a very young man uh, as a politician, and and what do, what do, what's your what's your future? Ah. I think I think as 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 an elected representative, uh, my position remains the same. Speak up for what is right. Uh, propose what is best for the country. And uh, at the end of the day, we have to put that up front and let the people decide the government that they they want. Um, we will continue to do our best. We believe that Malaysia has a, a better future. Uh, and, uh, and and Malaysia can do a lot better because Malaysia is a country that is blessed with loads and loads of natural resources. Uh, and uh, if we have the right government in place, then uh, we will be a, a, a nation that we can be a nation that the world looks up to and not be a nation that is shamed by leaders involved in corrupt acts like 1MDB. I think that, uh, that's a great note for maybe us to leave it on. Tony, uh, I can't thank you enough for your time. I know Malaysia's in good hands as long as it has leaders and voices like you. And um, we look forward to seeing how this all plays out. But thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.